Today we're working on starting our pool storage project. We've lived in this house for two and a half two and years. Two and a half years, yeah. And we've finally gotten used to how we use our pool space and our outdoor living space. And we're about to turn our garage into an outdoor living space too. And this is kind of the first step in that process, getting all the pool uh, toys and like the salt and the chemicals. chemicals. All the things that yeah. we've been storing in the garage all this time, we need to have a place to put all of them. So we started designing a pool storage area. And of course, you've got like utilitarian guy and you've got design. We meld yeah. together and we've come up with a plan. So we're gonna get started on it today. We always start our plans with a loose design and a loose construction material list and all that because we know where we're headed. Um, and so we started with that. But when we got out there to really measure the space, it's a lot smaller than I thought that it was going to be. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to be kind of creative and inventive with our storage solutions to get everything packed in there that we want to get packed into that space. And I'm leaving that to you because if it's me, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> straight lines and shelves yours is the left side you're the pool equipment side and I'm the storage side right together we'll make it happen right if you say so <laughs> this whole process with an inspiration board for Thomas, which is always his favorite. He loves an inspiration board. I, do. I just love them. When I start pulling out the ideas from Alice Beach, Florida, which is like multi-million dollar homes and want to incorporate them into our, you know, regular suburban home, that's when he, it's his favorite. Yeah, my eyes just light up <laughs> just with excitement. <laughs> so, that's what's happening. I brought him pictures of some beautiful doors from Alice Beach, of some roofing ideas of some storage solution spaces and we're going to put them all together into this little i think it's going to work out it's going to be good but i'm excited about the inspiration photos because we're going to find a way to make them practical simple and beautiful all at the same time we always do we always do yeah we got it So when we first moved in, uh, the space looked like one of those abandoned <laughs> warehouses in a scary movie. <laughs> that it wasn't was, that bad. <laughs> Although was, the pool uh, was pretty green. The, the lattice work in front of the pool equipment. Yeah. You know, because you that have to was, hide any kind of utilitarian thing with a piece of lattice in the south. It was kind of a hot mess when we first got here. After Thomas did the electrical work and the lumber, next thing we had to focus on was the roof and getting the roof right. Because the biggest thing with the roof is to make sure that rain runs off of it and not back behind the wall or into the building. Right. So, so the <laughs> issue there was going to be the material that we use for the roof because uh, with the roof being so flat, you yeah. couldn't go with asphalt shingles, which right. is what we typically would use. We needed something that would like jet the water right off. So we ended up going with a corrugated plastic and it was really easy to work with, which was it perfect. Was very easy to work with in hindsight. Originally I wanted a metal roof and that would have been a bad idea. So we went with the plastic roof. We decided to use a cement board for the outside to wrap the exterior of the, the storage shed and then we used plywood on the inside, primed everything with oil-based paint, mm -hmm. and then went back with another layer of latex paint over that because it's, it's outside obviously, so we wanna make sure that it's really protected from the weather inside and outside. It's probably gonna get wet. There's kids running in and out with their swimsuits to get things. So we're just doing our best from the very beginning to make sure that it's as waterproof as possible. Since the space was so small, we had to make sure that we were maximizing our tool storage space as well as the pool storage space. That's hard to say all at one time. <laughs> Both of those storage areas. And so we made sure to add multiple lev levels of shelves on one side, all of the tools laying flat up against the wall on the opposite side. And I think we did a good job of maxing out every, the amount of storage that we needed. Yeah, we had to go through and kind of 
look at what we already had. You know, some of the buckets are really tall and then right. the big things of salt. Yeah, we definitely catered the shelving, you know, heights and things like that according to what we had to store in the space. So that part was very strategic for us. And then and we have several shovels and brooms and, and those rakes that needed to hang on the wall. Yeah. And figuring out where they would all go um, took a lot of planning yeah. instead of just throwing stuff up there. Yeah. But I, th I like how it turned out. I think so. I think, I think it's really it good. It's really good. Yeah. From a design point of view, I wanted for this pool storage to just look simple. And simple sometimes is hard to achieve, honestly. It takes a lot of thought to make things look effortless. <laughs> and so what I really wanted was for that pool door, the, um, the pool pump door to be very simple and just like a white wall for it to look like a white wall and then to have a very much more decorative door for where the, the storage for the pool um, toys and things like that were going to go and the garden equipment. I think yeah. it kind of the way that we've designed it or you've designed it, uh, it kind of just disappears in this space. Yeah. Instead of being a featured spot in yeah. the backyard. Yeah, it looks, I, I really do think it looks like it was meant to be there, that whole storage right. area. So we're happy with it and happy it's done. <laughs> On to the next project. <laughs>